Hey, what's up guys? The Iron Hulk is here doing a movie review. I know it's been almost two weeks now, I think. No, over a week since Dark of the Moon came out. Transformers Dark of the Moon. Directed by Michael Bay. And um, I just had to kind of soak everything in for a week. And, you know, kind of think about the scenes, think about everything that happened in the film, what I liked, what I did not like. And so, here is my review. So let's start with the story, because the story is most important, maybe not in the Michael Bay film, but in a movie, it's important. So the story this time around involves um, the Autobot arc crash landing on Earth's moon. And... Um, for some reason, like, for the past three movies, the Autobots had no idea that the Ark was there, even though maybe, like, traveling to Earth, they, one might have, like, seen it real quick and just like, ah, don't tell Optimus, just, you know, it'll make a good story in the third film. Anyways, um, so yeah, so, so the film starts out, and there'll be some spoilers, but, you know, it's... I'm pretty sure mostly everyone's seen it, so... Seen the movies. So, the film starts out with a really cool montage of... of Cybertron and war, and then the arc crashes. It gets hit, crashes on Earth's moon. Humans are like, there's something on the moon. So, John F. Kennedy and um, his advisors are like, let's go on the moon, and we'll... You know, the Russians are on the, you know, looking at stuff on the moon, and they found some, uh, Cybertronian stuff, so JFK is like, we're going to the moon, do, and the public thinks that they're doing it for the space race, but really it's to find what the heck is going on with that fallen ship, so Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong go to the moon, and then, then they have that 20 minute, was it 20 minute, or seven, yeah, I think it was like 20 minute, um, like, cut off, um, which actually happened. They lost connection for, like, 20 minutes. I think it, yeah, somewhere around there. And, um, and so that 20 minutes was spent looking in the arc. And they, you know, they're just like, whoa, there's robots here, or giant robots. And they're like, holy crap. And then, um, so th that's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> like, that's the whole thing. Like, they, they did not take anything back with them. They just were like, oh, there's aliens here. We're going to go because, you know, that... Okay, cool. So that's pretty much the whole concept of Dark of the Moon. Like, they've known <laughs> since, like, the 60s that robots um, were on the moon. And yet, in the first film, like, Sexter... Excuse me, Sector 7 was like, oh, well, no one knows about Sector 7, but we have a giant cube, and and there's, you know, pyramids that have sun harvesters, whatever. So that's one gripe I have already with um, Dark of the Moon. It, um, the story, it just doesn't really connect, per se, but, you know, whatever, it's a Transformers film. So then we move on, Sam Witwicky and his uh, crack head attitude still very much in full force in this film um and he has a new girlfriend who was played by Rosie Huntington Whiteley I think and she's hot she's very hot very spicy and um and Wheelie and his new buddy Buddy Brains live with them and um in Washington D.C. And, um, he, Sam Witwicky even received a, like, Medal of Honor from Obama, so, you know, he's got, he's like, well, hey, I have a medal from Obama, so, you know, I'm, I'm really cool, but he can't find a job. So that's his story, and I'm just gonna stop there, because there's a lot of stupid stuff that goes with Sam Witwicky's story. So then we'll move on. So, we pretty much see the first, like, entrance of the Autobots, um, what do we see, we, we have them, 
you know, monologue by Optimus Prime, like, in the first two films. And, um, you know, and he, pretty much what he says is that there's not really that many Decepticons right now, and so the Autobots are helping, um, like, human, human issues. So, you know, we have a short scene that was showed many times in the trailers uh, with Mirage, or excuse me, Dino, he's a, an Italian Ferrari now, um, transforming and stopping, like, these Middle Eastern guys. Um, so, you know, they stop, like, terrorism or something, something like that. And then Bumblebee transforms into stealth force mode and blows some crap up. It's like, it, it, I, I was expecting to see more of a, like, fight scene, per se, but whatever. It, it was still pretty cool. So we got that. Then we have Optimus Prime and Ratchet in Chernobyl, which is that, um, where that nuclear explosion happened. And you, it's like, no one can live there anymore. And, um, so... We are introduced to two new Decepticons in that scene. Uh, we are introduced to Shockwave and his pet uh, giant drill monster thing. And we are introduced to Laserbeaks. Yeah, he's awesome. Um, and he speaks. Pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Um, so yeah, we got Laserbeak and Shockwave. Um, Shockwave, you know... Uh, here's, this is another issue I had. It's not a big issue, but... You know, like, Laser Peak <laughs> never spoke in the in pretty much, like, any version of Transformers. And if he did, it probably wasn't much. He didn't, probably didn't say much. And then in this film, he has, like, full lines going on, which is cool. <laughs> and then when Shockwave shows up, he's like, Optimus. Okay, I'm going to go now. And that's all he says. And then he speaks some Cybertronian. But that's all he says. I'm like, really? He's not going to be like, that's illogical or like, you know, something. Or like, something. Come on. But whatever. I mean, it was, it was still pretty cool. He's, he, he looks really cool. Um, but yeah, it was a short fight scene. But Prime has his trailer and it's really cool when he the giant drill attacks him. And he transforms in midair and then his trailer transforms into some sort of like... Uh, weapons bay that holds all his crap and he's got like a sword and a shield and all his flying gear uh, very cool so that was that and um, and then they find this piece that belonged to uh, the either the space bridge technology or the Autobot arc but whatever Optimus Prime's like what the hell what's that doing here I haven't seen that in like a billion years and why is it on earth on, in Chernobyl and so they bring back they bring that back to uh, Nest, which is the headquarters from the second film. And they're like, "Whoa, yeah, whoops, sorry. You know, we kind of forgot about that." And Prime's just like, "You know, WTF, man? I'm pretty pissed right now." So you know, we, we have a lot of cool robot interaction in this film, and I like how Optimus Prime has more of a like. Uh, pissed off personality in this film and he's not just like you know I'm just gonna stand there and say really important things and you know in this film he really shows emotion you know I mean he his first or his second transformation scene he's it's like an angry transformation and he just like like slams his fists on the floor and he's just like you lied to us like in the commercials um, to um, Frances McDermott, who I love, because she was in Fargo, and she was really good in this, too. I mean, she had some stupid lines, but um, having her in this film was awesome. So I was like, yes, we got Margie from Fargo. Um, what else? So yeah, so we got Pissed Off Prime. Um, we got Bumblebee, who I can tolerate. I'm not, actually, I'm not like, oh, I hate Bumblebee anymore. I, I actually, or I don't hate Bumblebee anymore. I, I really like him. I really liked him in this film, because he, he had a you know, he had more personality, I guess. Kind of like Optimus. Like, Bumblebee in the first two, it's just like, I'm your guardian, uh, Sam Witwicky, and I'm gonna be cute for the kids. This one, he actually kicked ass, which was cool. Um, and we got Sideswipe, who gets a, he gets his own action scene. It was so cool. Um, we had this scene where, um, Ironhide and Sideswipe are on the free, or no, it's, Excuse me, Bumblebee, Mirage, and then Sideswipe. 
and they're on the freeway, and they have this fight scene with the Dreads, who are suburbans, and they transform into, like, these predator-looking guys, which is cool. And um, the first thing you see is Bumblebee transform and sideswipe into their stealth force, and then you have Mirage, or excuse me, Dino, I keep calling him Mirage, transform, and then, like, he has these two hooks that, like, work as leashes, and he rides one of the Dreads, and, you know, they kill him. And then we have the cool Ironhide fight scene with the two dreads where they crash into each other and they have like a really slow-mo transformation scene. It was so cool. And then, to top it off, we, we get Sideswipe uh, to show up and they have like a four-way Mexican standoff. Sideswipe even says that. He's like, whoa, we got a Mexican standoff here or something like that. And Ironhide's just like, complete badass. He's Ironhide. He's awesome. Um... So, oops, so, um, yeah, so that was a really cool scene. And then, um, oh, jeez, I just completely forgot about this guy, and all, you know, I forgot about Sentinel Prime. Um, well, I mean, Sentinel Prime, okay, so, yeah, Sentinel Prime was on the Ark, and, um, Optimus and Ratchet go and revive him, and Optimus is like, holy crap, that you were like my teacher a long time ago. And he's like, I'm Leonard D-Boy. <laughs> and he's just like, cool. All right. Um, I, I felt that some of his lines were kind of funny, like the way Leonard D-Boy said things like space bridge. He's like, he's like, we built technology through a space bridge. <laughs> like some of the things he said were just like, like, huh. Like, you sure you don't want to redo that one voiceover? Uh, you know, whatever. I mean, he was cool. He, he was like the old man guy with, like, Pirates of the Caribbean shit, uh, like, like beard, chin things. Um, but if you thought that he was a good guy, you thought wrong. Sentinel Prime betrays the Autobots, and, um, and the whole... Uh, Dreads versus Sideswipe, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Ironhide, Mirage sequence was to protect Sentinel Prime because they thought the Dreads were going to go after Sentinel and they were going to re, you know, have him turn on the pillars to operate a space bridge. Because on the ship he had a bunch of pillars and he's the only one that can operate the space bridge, Sentinel Prime. And Optimus Prime revives him and blah blah blah. So, right when they kill the Dreads, Ironhide's like, all right, I'm complete badass. The audience loves him because he's awesome. Sentinel Prime transforms, and you're like, oh, cool, maybe Sentinel Prime will get his own fight scene. Oh, no, he shoots Ironhide, and he's just like, yeah, sorry, guys, JK, LOL, I'm an evil guy, haha. <laughs> and he runs away with the pillars, he destroys Nest. He, like I said, kills Ironhide. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> just... Okay. Yeah, they killed Ironhide. He's dead. He, he rusted, and no one cared. They're just like, okay, Ironhide, you know, no offense, dude, but, like, there's a giant crazy Transformer dude, like, killing everyone right now, so we'll just let you rust into pieces right there. And, yeah. And, yeah, even, you know, I, I felt that maybe just, like, one small scene or, like, one bit of dialogue just to say, like, like, rest in peace, Ironhide, or, like, this is for Ironhide, punch Sentinel in the face. But no, they just, they're just like, I mean, at least Jazz was like, at least Prime just went like, aw, Jazz, in the first film. <laughs> but this one, they're just like, yeah, Ironhide, you know, you're dead. So he's dead, and, um, so yeah, Sentinel betrays the Autobots, and he joins forces with Megatron, who, um, at the start of the film, he was hiding in Africa with Soundwave and Starscream. And, and, oh yeah, and then he has a pet, um, who's called Igor, and he's just like, my master, my master, he's like a, a head, I, and I'm pretty sure it was Long Haul's head, Long Haul was the big green transformer in the second film, um, <laughs> he's actually really funny, he's like, he's got these little tiny legs, and these tiny little hands, and a, and a, a small cane, and he's just a walking head, and he's just like, my master, my master, <laughs> That guy was pretty awesome. I can see it was just like, I'm pretty sure to have like an extra like thousand dollars just to get ILM to animate him 
Michael Bay is crazy like that. But at least there was no twins in this film, so. Um, yeah, so, yeah, they come, they take over, they put the pillars together, the Decepticons come from the moon and all over the place and take over Earth. And Sentinel Prime has the Autobots um, exiled from Earth, and they're just like, well, Sam, you're fudged. We're gonna go now. And, um, yeah, so we meet uh, two, no, excuse me, three Autobots, like, in the middle of the film when they're about to leave Earth, and they're the Wreckers, um, which, <laughs> um, the Wreckers, that their design, um, they're NASCAR, um, like, racing vehicles of some sort with weapons on them. And so, um, when I bought the figures a while back, their designs were very stereo, like, typical. Like, they were, like, rednecks. And I was just like, really? Like, we had the twins, and now we have these stereotypical redneck guys. And I was just expecting them to speak, like, rednecks, like, you know, Hey, how you doing there, Sonny? What's up, Optimus Prime? Like, stuff like that. But they were actually, like, Scottish in the film. And they were really funny. Or, like, one was Irish, one was Scottish. And they were hilarious. Um... So, I mean, that made up for that. I was just like, oh, well, okay. I actually like these guys. They're pretty cool. So, yeah, they were just, like, kept at the NASA base because um, Francis McDermott said they're assholes. So, whatever. I mean, it was it was okay. I, I thought it was all right to just, like, introduce them in the middle of the film. I'm like, well, they're probably not going to do much. But So, so yeah, but then we get, you know... Obviously, the Autobots never left Earth. Um, then they come and save the world, blah, 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 get some cool fight scenes. And so, the film as a whole, I have to say I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was really cool. Um, the CG was awesome. The 3D was really good. I just felt that the story, once again, gets lost in the action. And you kind of lose... You just lose the sense of, like what's the whole point of this like like why 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 is this happening again you, you know you're not really reminded that much why it's happening it's just that you know the, the first hour of the film is a giant excuse for the last hour which is to blow stuff up um because i mean things happen that you're just like okay really like um megatron and, and his decepticons are in africa and then all of a sudden they're in Washington, D.C., and Megatron's a truck now, Soundwave's a small Mercedes, and Starscream's the only one that can fly. And I just figured that maybe Starscream, you know, gave Soundwave and Megatron a ride to, to Washington. But, um, yeah, that's not really explained too well. But, you know, that, that, that wasn't really that bothersome. Um, what bothered me the most in the entire film, I, I, can, I have to say, is Optimus Prime. As badass as he was, I just felt that he was an asshole. He was a, I mean, he was a jerk. Um, I mean, I still love him, but um, <laughs> the last fight scene, he fights Sentinel Prime, and he gets his butt whooped. He even gets his arm chopped off. I was like, damn, Sentinel is really strong. And then Carly, Sam's girlfriend, tells Megatron that, like, you know, you're a bitch, and Sentinel, he, you're Sentinel's bitch. And he's like, rawr, I know I'm not, rawr, I'm going to go help Optimus. So, you know, he kicks Sentinel's ass for Optimus. <laughs> and, and Megatron says something, it wasn't like, I mean, it was cocky. He was like, what would you be without me, Prime? Prime said, like, the coolest line in the whole trilogy. He's like, let's find out, or, like, time to find out. And he puts his mask on and just rips Megatron's head off. And I'm like, wait, you know, he actually, like, did not do much in this film. Um, for those patriotic people, he did blow up the Lincoln Memorial, so I can see why maybe Prime was really like, well, he blew up Lincoln Memorial in this film. Um, but I'm just seeing that um, in, 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 a, in a sense that, like, if you were to only watch this film and see Prime kill Megatron, you'd just be like, what the hell, Optimus? But if you look at all three films, you can see that Prime's pretty pissed. I mean, Megatron killed Optimus in the last film. So, I mean, it's payback. It's just, I wish they could have included a bit more, like, tyranny with Megatron. 
Because, I mean, he just really did not do much. He, he... Sentinel Prime was the main villain, obviously. Megatron, he's, he's all beat up. Half his face is all messed up from the last film from Optimus. So he's really weak. And Optimus is just like, hey, look, I'm going to kill you. Um, even though, you know, you haven't really done much in this film, I'm still going to kill you. So he rips his spine off and then, like, slashes his head. So, I mean, I was okay with it. I thought it was cool, just very one-dimensional, whatever. And then he walks up to a dying sentinel, and he's just like, Prime, please don't shoot me, please, and Prime just shoots him. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god. It's like, this is like Dirty Harry Prime. He's just, <laughs> he's like, go ahead, make my day, Sentinel Prime, bam. Or, you know, he's like Chuck Norris. He just, I mean, in that sense, it was pretty badass. I just have a bit more heart for the Transformers. Um, you know, like, especially with a character like Sentinel and Megatron, which they were, they were fleshed out pretty well in this film. Unlike the Fallen in the last film, where you see him die and you're like, good, that guy was a jerk. I mean, you know. I mean, the same goes for Sentinel. But the Fallen, he just wasn't that big of a presence in the film, even though the frickin' title of the film is Revenge of the Fallen. Even though he shows up like five minutes before the film ends, and he's just like, oh, I got teleport powers. And Prime's just like, well, I combined with a giant jet, so... F you. Um, speaking of jets, Optimus Prime does get uh, a jet mode in this film. And it's pretty cool. Really cool 3D sequence. He fights the drill monster and then, like, rapes 20 Decepticons in, like, one giant shot and then, like, continues to just, like, keep on moving and then kills Shockwave super fast, rips his eye out, and then a really cold death. <laughs> and then Bumblebee kills Soundwave. He blows his head off. And, um, yeah. So, I mean, the film, the film was really cool. It was a really cool film. I like it. It's my favorite out of the three. The story itself is weak. Um, the comedy, it's a hit or miss. I mean, there was some funny stuff. I thought John Malkovich was pretty funny. I thought, um, Ken Jeong's role was weird. I mean, it makes more sense when you watch it a second time, but the first time I saw it, the first time I saw it, and he's in the elevator with Sam Witwicky, and he does like this weird like like turn, he's like, 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 what the hell's wrong with you? It was weird, like he was in so much pain just looking at Sam Witwicky, and then you find out that Laserbeak actually, like, was had him under control or some sort, and, uh, yeah, so, um, this review is really messy, I know, but, um, I can say that Dark of the Moon is really cool. I probably would give it maybe like 8 out of 10 stars. Um, it's just the action is awesome, but it just overpowers the story once again. And the ending is just ridiculous. Like, it, it's just a legit, like, Western ending. You kill the bad guy, and you just like, they're just like, it's over. We did it. Michael Bay credits. That's how it ended. Seriously, like, Optimus Prime gives his final speech <laughs> with one arm. He kills Sentinel and Megatron with one arm, and he gives his final speech with one arm. And Ratchet, oh my goodness, Ratchet, he does nothing in this film. Well, he does. He goes to the moon with Optimus, and he's like, Sentinel's passed out. And Optimus is like, really? No way. And, and then we get, like, some shots of him firing, and then... He's, like, in one of the final shots at the end of the movie. And he puts his arm around Bumblebee and says, You fought well. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like, Ratchet's cool. Like, at least have him heal someone. At least have him attach Optimus Prime's arm back. Or reattach it back on. Something. But no, Ratchet. Poor Ratchet. Ironhide. Dead. Mirage, or Dino. He was non-existent in the second half. Same with Sideswipe. He said, like, one thing. It's like, oh, Ratchet, let's go. <laughs> um, it was pretty much... It was about the Decepticons. Um, not even. Like, sort of. Like, Megatron, no. But it was very heavy, heavily um, focused on Starscream, who gets killed by Sam Witwicky. Which was stupid. He's He got this thing in his eye. He's like, my eye! My eye! He went out like a bitch. Uh, Shockwave, who... Also goes out like a bitch. Sort of. Well, I mean, it was cool how he died. It was just very, like... 
sudden you're just like, oh, hey, Optimus Prime, how you doing? Yeah, I remember you. I remember Shockwave. Rips his eye out. And then we get to see Barricade, sort of. Like, he's in it, but he doesn't do much. He kills, oh, he kills Wheeljack, or Q, whatever the hell he is. It's some old man. He's, he's got, like, three scenes, and he's like, oh, here's... I, it's it's Wheeljack. He, he made these devices for Sam the Soldiers, and he made um, Ironhide some weapons at the start. But he doesn't do much. It was a sad scene. Like, they killed him, and it was emotional. But then I was like, well, whatever. I mean, at least they have some Autobot deaths in this one. Um, and then, yeah, the, the prime rapage scene with, <laughs> with his jetpack, that was cool. Um... It was just an overall really cool film. I mean, different. It was it, the tone is very dark, very different film from the other two. Um, comedy wise, it's very it's there's still comedy, but it's light and there's no stupid like when shit goes down, there is no humor, which I was so happy about because Revenge of the Fallen, like you have something really serious happen and then Skids and Mudflapper are just like, oh hell no, like it's like really like. There's soldiers dying, and they're just like, we're going to ride on top of Devastator, and just, ugh. I still like Revenge of the Fallen, but when it gets serious, Dark of the Moon gets really serious, and it's dark, and people die, and blow up, and Decepticons have these cool ships, and, okay. So, that's what I thought of Dark of the Moon. It was cool. Not a perfect movie, but a perfect summer action film. Film. It's made a bucket load of money. Harry Potter will make more, probably, but whatever. Screw Harry Potter, it's stupid kid. Um, so yeah, Dark and the Moon Rocks. Go see it in 3D. Go see it many times so we can get a Transformers 4. Even if it's not directed by Michael Bay, I still would like to see this continued, like this film franchise, and not be, like, rebooted into something crappy, like, well, we have Hot Rod as our leader now, and... Shit, yeah. So, Transformers Dark the Moon 3D gets uh, 7.5. Let's give it a 7.5 out of 10. That's pretty good. That, that's a solid C+. So, until next time, my friends, adios.